Good morning, good evening, and everything in between. Good, uh, welcome to the Plone Conference 2021. It's amazing that we are back together again, virtually, some of us in person. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce my longtime friend, Chrissy Wainwright, who's uh, been a developer at Six Feet Up for eons and uh, has been on the Plone board for seven years now and has been our Plone board president for two years now. Um, Chrissy's been a wonderful colleague and a friend. Uh, I've known her for, I guess, about eight years now and running, and hopefully we'll have at least eight years more working together. So with that, welcome, Chrissy. Yeah, thank you, Ken. So I am talking about the state of the clone community today. Um, as Kim said, I'm Chrissy Wainwright, so I'm the Plone Foundation president. Uh, welcome. So welcome to the 2021 Plone Conference. I know Calvin and Kim already gave little greetings, but I get to greet you as the first speaker of the conference. Uh, and yes, as the person who built the talk schedule, I did get my talk in first so I can get it done and over with. Uh, apologies to those of you that have to wait until Thursday. For each conference, we generally have a state of clone talk given by the release manager that includes updates on what's happening in the community, uh, the development of clone and where it's going. Uh, we gave Eric a break this year and we split it up. So Timo's keynote tomorrow is going to focus on clone six and what that is going to look like. And I was selected to provide the parts that are focusing on the clone community. <clears throat> really quick, a uh, little bit about me. I am. Uh, been a developer at Six Feet Up since 2008. I've been on the Plone Foundation Board of Directors since 2014. You can find me at CDW9, most places online. And just other things I enjoy, climbing and uh, training for American Ninja Warrior. I'm trying to get on the show, but if I don't, I still enjoy playing around the, on the obstacles at the gym. So the Clone community. We have an amazing community of people. If you have ever been able to attend a, a conference or a symposium or a sprint in person, uh, you've been able to see this firsthand. Everyone in the community is welcoming and friendly, many greeting each other with hugs like we're a family because, because really we are. Uh, each conference is a family reunion for us. If you've not been able to attend in, an event in person, I highly recommend you do so when you get the opportunity as we do end up with some fun stories. There are the San Francisco organizers with their bunny ears. You may hear references to pants swapping and it is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, sometimes it happens with the infamous shiny disco pants. The photo on the right here was taken on the plone boat in Arnhem I wasn't there, but I know there are plenty of fun stories uh, from that conference and that boat. There was a flag that was stolen during the conference in Arnhem. It traveled the world and was eventually returned the following year in Brasilia. It's probably hard to see here, but there are signatures from Munich, from the Wine Sprint, Pricon US, the Six Feet Up Office, and the Emerald Sprint. Also in Brasilia, many of our dinners were eaten in a parking lot across from the hotel where the trainers were staying. Uh, so there was this guy there that would set up a grill uh, and selling skewers of meat and they were delicious. And so we kept going back every night. The Barcelona conference party had a pretty good band uh, with an accordion player there you may recognize. Uh, look for him giving talks in track two later today. There was a barrel of sake that got completely finished off in Tokyo at the party. And Ferrera featured some swords in dueling ponistas. There are plenty of other fun stories that either don't have photos or I couldn't find photos for them, uh, such as noise complaints that brought cops to the Six Feet Up party in San Francisco the katana that Miko won in a bingo game and had trouble at the airport trying to get it home. 
there's that blueberry drink that the Slovenians like to bring to the conferences. Uh, if you've had that, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and then playing cards against humanity in Boston. There are many more fun stories and I would love to hear them all from you. Uh, please share more on Twitter using the hashtag clone memories. Uh, I just sent out a tweet. Uh, you can respond to that if you want or post your own. Um, I'm also curious to know which conference was your favorite. There is a poll in Loud Swarm. So if you, you know, watching this in Loud Swarm, you can look over on the right side. Uh, there is a poll with all of the conferences. So answer which one was your favorite. Uh, mine was San Francisco. I did already answer the poll. That one was a lot of fun. Uh, I was surprised before the talk, I saw a lot of people were saying last year's conference was their favorite. Um, but I suppose that's also one that the most people have been able to attend. You know, a lot of us can't always travel to all of the conferences. I haven't been able to attend all of them myself. The Plum Foundation does have a Flickr account, and that's where I got many of the images that I'm using in this talk and some other ones that I had pulled from Twitter. We have over 8,000 photos on there, but we are missing some events. So if you have photos from those particular events, you know, contact me or Kim Nguyen if you have photos to add and we'll help you get those on there. And by the way, good luck finding photos from conferences on Flickr while sifting through the hundreds of photos that Kim takes. Um, plus it's really easy to get sucked into looking, just looking through the photos. I probably spent more time looking through photos for this talk than I did actually writing it. While online conferences don't compare to an in-person event, it does give us the ability to see Plon alumni drop in and say hi. And last year we did see several people that would not have been able to travel to attend. We continue to do our best to socialize with our fellow Plonistas the best way that we can. And I encourage you this week to join us in Slack, to participate in the socials and meet the speakers in Jitsi after they give their talks. Many of the speakers this week have been around the community for many years, and we're always happy to see new faces and get new ideas that will help clone the product and the community. And not just because a lot of the teams could also use more volunteers. Earlier this month, Clone turned 20 years old and it was nice to see the tweets about it. You know, as you look through these tweets, some from people who aren't as active in the community anymore, you can definitely see a theme among them and it is community. So plenty more Plone memories there. The Plone community is made up of several teams and sub communities as is reflected in this year's conference logo. So there along the bottom, we have the logos for Guillotina, Volto, Zope, and Pyramid. And while Pyramid is not officially under the Plone Foundation umbrella, we do consider them part of our family. In order to manage communication between the various teams and subcommunities, we started steering circle meetings. So over the past year, uh, it was about a little over a year ago, we started the steering circle as an effort to bring together the committees and teams of the Plone Foundation for what is essentially a stand-up meeting that happens once every two months. This has been beneficial in helping people across teams to be on the same page about what is going on in the various corners of Plone. It's not just for the team leads, uh, but we ask that each team have at least one person uh, attending to represent their team. And like the Plone Foundation Board, this is not a place where we discuss the development future of Plone, um, but has been a place where we can make sure that we are all on the same page with the current work and the future of Plone. The general meeting format we cover is that we go over some announcements, we get uh, a report out from each team, which includes the collaboration among the different teams, and go over any questions from the community and then highlight upcoming events like sprints. We haven't had many community, community questions yet, so I want to make sure that everyone is aware of this. If you have a specific topic that you would like to see the, see the Searing Circle discuss, you can send it in ahead of time. A link to a Google form is normally shared around before the meetings. And we do this for two reasons. One is to get the input from the community as a whole, you know, reinforcing the fact that this is not, not a closed meeting. The whole reason for this is to have more transparency in the community and clarity as to where we are going. The second reason is to make sure that the agenda is set beforehand so that we do not go over the allotted hour. The next meeting is happening this Friday morning during the open spaces. Training.plone.org recently received an overhaul. 
these training docs have been an important focus of our community in recent years. We want Plone to be as easy as possible for newcomers to come in and get started, and the training docs are a great place for them to do that. The conference trainings that took place over this weekend, many of them use these docs, and the trainers work hard to make sure that the instructions are up to date ahead of time. Not only is this material online for free, the videos from the conference trainings are publicly available on YouTube, or at least the ones from this weekend will be within a week. Clone's marketing team was rebooted a couple of years ago, and they have been doing a great job. In the past year, they have kept on top of publishing news and events. They organized World Clone Day 2021, which featured 24 hours of video on YouTube. They've been keeping up to date on content updates on Plone.org. Uh, Plone.com has been integrated into, into Plone.org, so Plone.com now forwards on, and they're working on making sure all that content is moved over. They opened the Plone store, so uh, you can get your 2020 and 2021 conference t-shirts uh, at store.plone.org. The marketing team also helped with organizing this conference, and they are planning a Plone.org renewal with Plone 6. Uh, check out Rika Pekka's talk on that tomorrow. Uh, we also have some podcasts now. So in the last year, a couple of podcasts have started up in the community. Kim Nguyen from Six Feet Up hosts the Plone podcast. It currently has 11 episodes featuring interviews with people from the Plone community and features a lot of fun stories in the history of Plone. There's more uh, hashtag Plone memories. And then the Plone Newsroom is a newer podcast by Philip Bauer and Fred Van Dyke, featuring or focusing on events and developments happening around Plone. Make sure to go like and subscribe. Another big part of our community inherited from ZOPE are the sprints. Sprints are several days of people getting together to work on a common goal. Many times this is for the development of Plone, but sometimes people get together for sprints on documentation, marketing, website updates, you know, anything that is just bringing people together to work on something together. COVID has unfortunately put a temporary stop to our ability to meet in person. Uh, and this has been very difficult for a community of social introverts. It has also caused a bit of a stall in being able to ship Clone 6. Uh, progress has been made and the alpha was just released uh, on Friday, but it has been slower than if we, were been, if we had been able to meet in person for the last year and a half. There have been many sprints still happening online, so we are seeing progress. The Plone Open Garden, or PLOG, which normally happens each spring, was not excluded from the events that were postponed but was eventually resurrected as the conference fan zone happening this week in Sorrento, Italy. So they have an area set up for watching the conference together. So hi everyone in Sorrento, I wish I was there. With the talks this week being in the afternoon in Italy, the mornings in Sorrento are being spent sprinting on tasks for Plone 6. I think they are planning on presenting a report out during the lightning talks this week. <clears throat> Something else that we see with sprints are new people signing contributor agreements for committing code. And we've had 34 new agreements signed in the last year. <clears throat> so for those of you that have, haven't been around our community in person, I'd like to tell you about my experience. I had never heard of Plown before joining Six Feet Up in 2008. I was hired for my CSS and JavaScript skills, and even that was only on static websites. Uh, I was quickly thrust into the world of Zope page templates, viewlets, portal CSS, portal JavaScript registries. Two months in, I attended my first symposium at Penn State. <clears throat> I remember our team working from a restaurant after we got into town and Paul Everett came in and visited us. You know, one of the founders of Zope, no big deal. As the first person outside of Six Feet Up that I met in the Plone community, I was able to see right away how friendly and approachable everyone was. It certainly did help that I had Calvin and Clayton to follow around that week, but I remember all of the Plonistas being friendly and cordial. Seven months later was my first Plone conference, which was in Washington, D.C. that year. I didn't feel ready to give a talk yet, so I was only there as an attendee. I sat in on Rob Porter's steaming talk and ended up helping him out when his demos were failing. He was thankful for my help, and I remember some people sitting behind me asking why I didn't give a theming talk. I was starting to realize that with my work at Six Feet Up, where I was continuously working on customizing many different Plone sites, that I had an advantage over people that maybe only maintain their university or specific company website. So at Plone Symposium East the following year, 
I gave my first clone talk called Understanding Clone 3 Viewlets to a Packed Room. It was at that time I realized that the things that I had learned with clone were not things that everyone else already knew and understood. And that realization encouraged me to continue giving talks and start giving trainings. And from that point on, I did give a talk or a training at any clone event I attended. I became an official member of the clone community and was encouraged to get involved in various teams. I was able to visit new and faraway places like San Francisco, Brasilia, and Tokyo. I've served on, served on the board of directors for the Plum Foundation for the last seven years. I was first asked to join the board in 2013 at the conference in Brasilia, I think by Erico, as he was prodding several attendees to fill a space. I considered it, and Paul Everett, who ended up being my travel buddy in Brazil, uh, he encouraged me to go for it. I didn't put in a nomination at that time, but I decided to do so the following year and have been on the board ever since. I had the opportunity to serve in all of the roles of secretary, vice president, and president. Uh, and I've gotten nothing but encouragement from fellow community members during my journey, which is another great aspect of our community. And now after this currently ending term on the board, I'm gonna be stepping back for a bit to focus on my family and taking care of my husband as he deals with cancer treatment. Uh, I'm not really going anywhere, I'm still developing with clone a lot. I just won't be on the board. Along with my fellow board members the last seven years, it has been great to have the opportunity to serve the community, to help keep the Plone Foundation running, and to do what we can to encourage transparency and communication among community members. So what else do we hope to see for the Plone community in the future? I'm looking forward to Plone 6 and keeping up with modern technologies, which Timo is going to talk about in his keynote tomorrow. I'm looking forward to getting in-person events running again, small and large. I'd love to see a Plone event in the US again sometime soon. I think the Boston conference in 2016 was the last one. And there has recently been more of an effort to get more members in the foundation, and this would be a great trend to continue. We have seen a bit of a drop off in recent years of members not renewing, and this certainly is not indicative of the amount of activity that the, the community is seeing, but it would be great to see more members and more activity from all around the world. Membership in the Plum Foundation is important because it helps to show that we are a thriving community and it gives you the opportunity to vote on where conferences are going to be and, and who the board members are representing the community. <clears throat> now, I realize there haven't been many votes recently, but sometimes we do have more set than seven nominations for the board and sometimes we do get more than one proposal for where to hold the annual conference. And this is where input from members is, is important. So one thing about the Plum Foundation membership is that it is awarded based on merit and what you have already been doing for the community. If you have not yet gotten involved, here are some ways that you can get started. Uh, coding bug fixes and new feature development may seem like the most obvious, but that's not the only way that you can contribute. You can start by getting involved in the, in the forum at community.plone.org. You can you know, answer questions when you can, get involved in discussions, um, and just in general, you know, get people to know who you are. If you come across incomplete or outdated documentation, you can go update it. The left side of docs.plone.org has a contribute button, which takes you to a page with instructions of how you can update the docs. And this page even has a notice at the top. It says, contributing to the docs is an excellent way to get involved, meet the community, and to improve Plone. Don't hesitate to contribute also if English is not your first language. And I can tell you that this was written by someone whose first language is not English. Uh, it's more important to us to have the documentation at all than to worry about the grammar being perfect. Additional ways that you can help are with translation. So for those of you that do speak multiple languages, um, you know, Plone itself has translated into many different languages. We can add more, but then there's also upkeep that is needed on existing languages as new features are added. Posting or helping at a conference booth is also a great way to help out and to tell people about your favorite content management system. You can get involved in one of our various teams. So at plone.org slash community is our full listing of, of teams. And then also check out sprints. So we will have sprints happening this weekend. Um, so if you see something there that is something you'd be interested in helping out with, you know, go ahead and join. Even if there's not much that you feel that you can do, 
Um, I'm sure there'll be something that someone can ask you to help out with. So some tips for getting started. Um, remember that even small contributions are helpful. You know, anything that you can do. Don't be afraid of failure. I mean, it may happen that you don't follow all of the proper steps in submitting a pull request the first time, and it's okay. Someone will likely tell you what needs to be done differently. Just don't take it personally. Fix the mistake and try again. So don't complain about things that don't work as you expect. Um, it's very easy to come across something and, and get frustrated seeing that you know it doesn't work how, how you expect. So instead of like going on the forum and complaining about it, um, turn it into do something that positive about it instead, like submit an issue in GitHub about it, provide a workaround for the problem if you know of one, or you know start a discussion if you're not sure what, what should happen next. Remember that none of us are getting paid for the work that we do with Clone, and we're all doing our best. Also, be helpful any way that you can. Uh, and as much as you can, ignore the imposter syndrome. You know, you may feel that you're not good enough to do any of these things, but if you make an effort, uh, even starting with something small, it will be rewarding. And you'll find that the other Plonistas will help you along your way too. I can tell you that it has been an honor to serve the community these last seven years on the board and the 12 plus years that I have been actively involved in the community. We talk a lot about the Plone community being a family and, and you truly are. You know, I wish I could hug you all in person, but it looks like we'll have to wait at least another year for that. This community means a lot to me. And while I will no longer be on the board, I'm still working primarily on clone projects, so I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I am thankful to Six Feet Up for this group of people that I was introduced to. And if the community continues on as it has the last 20 years, uh, I think we can easily make it at least another 20. Uh, I'm looking forward to many more clone memories. So thank you and enjoy the conference. Thanks, Chrissy. That's a wonderful overview. And I love how we strive so hard to make sure that we're a welcoming community and we really do look forward to all your contributions and your continuing contributions. And so um, thank you again, Chrissy. Chrissy Wainwright, Clone Foundation President and my great colleague at Six Feet Up.